Hello, everybody. How are you doing? What's up? Hello. We are back and we're very new at video and podcast. So um, I guess we weren't introducing myself. I am Eve. If you guys have not seen us yet, um, and this is my I'm, husband. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Jeremy. husband. <laughs> I'm Andy. And I'm Casey Come Posada. Come on, Casey what's Posada, up, better what's known up? as Shrek. That's right. Um, yeah, bienvenidos. Come on, he's fresh out. Yeah. How many days have you been out? I got out Tuesday. Wow. That's, and here yeah. he is, right? Um, so Less we're than a week. Less than we're a week. We're so excited yeah. about that. We'll get back to that in a moment. Let I'm me Chris. Let me go ahead and um, get me. some... Oh, That's me, Chris, <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget me. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and get some shout outs out. Um, let me see. Uh, Isaac in Kentucky, Herschel Wheeler at Ferguson, Rebecca in Arkansas, Robert Robertson, Damian Huckabee, um, Alfred Martinez. Um, and thank you for announcing our podcast podcast alfred at ramsey unit el gordo at billy moore you guys awesome, yeah um because billy moore just have, must have got their tablets and we used to go to billy moore for every years. week yeah yeah every for week but the, i guess the people that are there now don't know no. that we went there every week we haven't been there in a while um uh, micah micah johnson jelly roll awesome. um pancho g little b oklahoma squid cowboy rabbit and bull over there um terry Co corbin gerardo hernandez ivan harrison um joshua who is a pk if you don't know what a awesome. pk is that's a pastor's kid i was a pastor's kid too so i relate to all those things um and Pampa, Texas, and Richard Cervantes, who went by Batman, better known as oh, Batman. Sorry. But to me, he is mijo. Um, okay, Andy. he's yeah. mijo, mijito. Yeah. Um, and yes, of course, I remembered you, uh, yeah. mijo crazy person anyway um and so he sent me a picture he's like i don't know if you remember me I'm like do i forget my children right yeah. no. she was like oh my god me anyway yeah. so um russell cole let's see hash uh, in jordan unit and lots of christians there in jordan unit i'm getting so many letters from jordan unit so wow. nobody's alone that's right. Yeah. You know, you're not alone. There are lots of Christians around you and y'all need yeah. to come out the closet. Come, come on. You all know? the way out. And stop being secret Christians. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Raymond Shelton, Omar Cruz, Misty, Joe Wilson, Amber, Ray, Silva, and Lane Murray in La Chola in Mountain View. We've been getting Chola. a lot of females writers yeah. lately. That's awesome. so cool. Good to have you guys. Yes. They found us and they're spreading the word. That's awesome. Raven Arian and Lane Murray, um, Margarita Martinez, Juan Valencio, Chapita Rulo Duran, Jesus Mata Castillo, and Big Mike. Awesome. Uh, and I was like, what big, what big Mike doing in that group? You yeah. know, <laughs> um, with all the Hispanics there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, maybe he's Hispanic. Wingnut over in Stevenson, Cedric Robinson, Moose, okay. um, and Polunsky, of course. We love you so much. Awesome. I got your letter. Um, John Odom, let's see, and Estelle, Andrew Grubbs, Leroy Rodriguez, Isaac from Kentucky. Lex in K Kentucky, awesome. okay. Casey Kennedy, Kermit Guy, Cesar Figueroa, Sidney Benner, who goes by Preacher Man in C2 Dorm. And there's a lot of guys that are called Preacher Man in different yeah. Yeah. units. So I kind of got to specify. And there I was think, a preaching machine preacher last week. Yeah, There is yeah. a preaching machine. I'm, I also I like that. am a preaching like, machine. I know. That's like okay. Next level. Yeah. Yes. yeah. All right. So um, the prayer circle card from Union Correctional Work Camp. Thank you guys so much. Um, Robert Becker from Missouri. Let's see. Ray Ramirez. Amber from Hobby Unit. Mark Gandy. Bianca Olivares um, and I loved it she signed it Real Vida Por Vida oh, mm -hmm. vamos uh -huh. yeah. um, Leonard Duty Jr. Um, and Preacher Man de Jesus Gocher in Licking Missouri isn't that weird wow um, okay. Vernon Montgomery in Bully Oklahoma Maurice Young Lucito FB Pod and Michaels Unit who has Ox Tin Man Heist Ramon Roman Noah Pookie Trinidad Franklin Daniel and Tommy and Rosa Perez, hello to you. And, um, and you know, I wanted to say to you guys, because we're getting so many letters and, you know, so many people want to minister and they're like, I can't wait to get out and come back. You don't have to right. wait. 
Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, right. hey. You yeah. don't got to wait to come back. Right. The people are hurting all around you. Right. Listen to right me. Right where you are. You got to right. activate it. And many come are. On, get on. activated right where you That's are. Right. Come on. Yeah. I even tell my group that I say, you know, you find want to find somebody to hang out with. Woohoo. Um, or you need somebody, you know, <laughs> somebody on. needs, they're lonely or they need a word from God. Why don't we pray about it and say, you know, maybe my daughter yeah. or I'm for Mitchell or Everett or what have you. Right. And, and yeah. I can give them a script. Scripture, I can take them to eat lunch. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Yeah. Like get activated right where you're at. There are people that are hurting like you hurt. That are right. lonely like you're lonely yeah. right where you're at. So let's do that. All right. So let me, um, let me segue on that real quick. Cause you talk about people working and I just want to shout out a couple of field ministers that uh, we've known for years. And the word says to honor those who labor among you Amen. in the Lord and mm. esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. I want to shout out Mike West and yes. Guy Graves and lots of other of the field ministers, uh, inmate pastors, life coaches all over. And if you uh, have been touched wherever you are uh, by someone who's doing the work on the unit and you'd like them to get a special uh, thanks, then right. please write us. We'd love to shout them out too and just thank them for Oh, they working. do do that. Yes. They do yeah. do that. Yeah. I got to get a, like some, sometimes 10 shout outs or Ooh, more yeah. out of one letter. So they Come do on. do that. Um, but I'm the one that largely does that. I'm having to get help now. It's that much. I'm, I'm three days back behind right now wow. um, and the yeah. mail is growing you every day the stack of letters it's a we'll it's, take a picture but you you won't be able to believe it that's a lot like a christmas bag <laughs> yeah right <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in yeah so um, we do, I, I want to remind you guys that we do got to get a hold of rock bands, you know, any music we play on podcasts, we've got to get permission for. So I got, you know, my Hispanic brothers right. asking for more Spanish. Um, we did get another um, guy that they asked about that I had never heard of. Right. Um, what's his name? Alex Arraso or something yes. like that. And so we're going to be able to play his music. Right. Um, and if you know anybody, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out here that's hearing this. If you know someone, and you think that they would be favorable? They got good Christian music, w w any genre. Uh, send them our way. But we do got to get permission. So it's not that we don't want to put rock. Right. I love rock. Yeah, yeah. I love rock. Um, but we got to get a hold of those bands. We have tried. Right. Our time is so limited. Um, so. Chris is editing most of the day and night yes, right now. And I'm on letters. Of, of course, my husband's, his job takes hours and hours. We have units we go to like tomorrow. We will be going to Wainwright. Um, there's so much going on. And once in a while, we actually have to eat and yeah. <laughs> stuff like yeah. that. A new sense stuff. So, so anyway, we do got to do that. And I want to remind you of that. If you didn't know that we have to get permission for podcasts. We don't have to do that for radio. So um, there's that going on on to you have a few things. Yeah, a couple of things. So I uh, got an exciting announcement. Uh, we found out a couple of weeks ago that the Securus uh, company provides e-magazines and e-books yes. through the tablets. Uh, and we've been doing newsletters for years. Uh, so we've converted some of our newsletters and added some new content and we've uploaded it to Securus. You should be able to find it in the e-book reader or magazines. It's called Real Vida Magazine. So make sure and search for it. We don't know. We, they don't tell us when it hits. So when you right get it. And if you've been writing us, please let us know that it's there and that it came out right because it's the first time we've done this. Uh, also, uh, we're excited about trending on Pando. Lots of people are finding us on Pando that have had a tablet for weeks uh, and never found us, but when we hit Pando. So um, we just want to encourage you, if you have friends and family that you want them to watch the show, the easiest way is for them to go into their uh, Play Store if they have Google or an Android phone or into the App Store if they've got an iPhone, download Pando. Right. Uh, they can have the app. It's not for prisoners only. Anybody can have it. Right. Chris and I have it on our phones yes. uh, and they can watch on there and and it's, of course, when they watch, it helps us to stay trending and find new people who right. haven't met us yet or seen the ministry. So uh, one other thing we wanted to announce, we do put up the Cash App and the Venmo. We're not asking you if you don't have resources to give. We believe right. in God. God is providing. But lots of people have asked for how to give. And so uh, we want people to know if they want to give and they have the resources to, it's Cash App, dollar sign, Real Vida Ministries, capital R, capital V, capital M. And for Venmo, it's at Real Vida Ministries, right. capital R, capital V, capital M. Of course, v, that's not for M. them because they can't donate right. that way. Right. And, yeah. and we do have that's guys that have world. sent yeah. us um, checks, checks, you know, from the units or whatever in the mail. But we're saying for your free world families right. or right. anybody that sees us that's out in the free world. 
that and free world access, yeah. is seeing us on video right. and hearing us on they audio. Are. So it is for them. Um, so I'm going to read a couple letters if that's okay. Uh, they just mean so much. Um, Real V that you guys are awesome. Y'all are moving mountains for us prisoners by bringing Christ to our cells. The same cells that our past life locked us in and threw away the key. I'm G4 here at this unit, but not long ago, I was in the heart of Texas seminary program at Hobby Unit training to become a field minister. Life knocked me down and God called my mother home and 2021. I lost my way and had to step back from the program. I convinced myself that I had it all under control and I'll return quickly where I belong. Life was not done with me. Christmas 2022, my husband died in a car accident on his way home. He was only 34. Of all days to be writing you, today is or would have been his 35th birthday. I chose the easy way out, resulting in violence, turning back to old ways, and now here I am in G4 custody. My mom always told me I was special. God was going to use me for greater good. And every time I've been knocked down by life, I've tried to run away from him and his purpose for me. So he locked me in a cell down here in cell block so I can't run anymore. I replay the songs y'all upload over and over and feel so moved. I can't run from the feeling anymore. I've always felt like the black sheep inside and outside of these walls, but I am okay in my skin now. Matthew 18, 14, NLT version. In the same way, it is not my heavenly father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. God gave me this black sheep fur on purpose. It is part of my testimony. And now I am ready to step back into the game and rock this black sheep oh, coat of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For yes. Christ, thank you for all y'all's time and effort. The music is the light I needed to relight the fire in my heart for Christ. That's so awesome. So, I mean, it moved me so wow. deeply. And um, I bawled my eyes out and, and lucky I got that over with. So I don't <laughs> have to do it on video. Yeah. But truly, you know, um, so many are, saying that like I, I'm finding it's okay to be the black sheep right. I'm the black sheep me too David was the black sheep come on yeah. Joseph was the black sheep right. in the Bible and um, and that's who God chose and we were different for a reason right yeah and all the scars and all the wounds that the devil made in our lives God is now turning around and so it's so so come so on. awesome so great Wow. Here, here's another letter. I am 31 years old with an aggravated charge. I've done one half of my life in prison. Let me correct myself. I've been in and out of juvenile and county jail. I've done three prison sentences. I've got a strong testimony or so I've been told. I'm currently serving a nine year sentence with three and a half left to go. I grew up in a very toxic environment and abusive household. I used to sneak out the house to go to a Spanish church on the in the projects I grew up in, not even understanding anything that was said because wow. I didn't speak a word of Spanish. I just knew in my heart I needed him. Yeah, I prayed a lot, even when I felt like my prayers felt unanswered or unheard. I eventually quit praying and soon after I quit believing in God. I have been through things no child should, seen things and done things many wouldn't ever be able to speak of. I know now in my adult years that God or something greater was watching over me. A purpose? Still not sure what it is. I sometimes joke about I live for this, meaning this lifestyle that comes with prison. I just know this isn't all there is to life. I didn't choose these cards I was dealt, yet I know it's my choice on how I play these cards I was given. I recently repented and still struggle daily with things. I still find myself listening to rap and doing things I shouldn't while still reading and listening to Pando. I thirst for change, yet find it so hard when I've lived this way my whole life. I came across Real Vida, the music y'all put on there. Man, it touched me. I can relate to them, that rap on there. It's touched me so deeply that I'm here listening over and over while writing to Real Vida. I wanted to give thanks, not just to Jesus for forgiveness of my sins, yet for speaking through this ministry to get to me. Mm. Seeing people that are tatted up and living a thuggish life like I have, yet have turned and are using their suffering and pain for the greater good. I love that I can listen to this gospel rap and it moved me in a way that street rap could never right. make me feel. Wow. I am being restored. One day soon, I pray to have the courage to speak my testimony and preach what God has saved me from. Wow. I'm no longer afraid or ashamed to walk into any church meeting. Years ago, I couldn't look its way. The truth is I've been a prisoner in my own head wow. since I was a toddler. I feel 
hopeless and helpless at times. I get confused and sometimes feel like giving up physically because mentally I can't or don't want to go through the pain. I basically turn to Jesus because he is the only one who has ever saved me, yet I'm still stuck with changing my ways. I know that I could be dead if I don't switch lanes. I want something good to come from this life. And my prayer is that I get the chance to help someone who's been like me one day to get to believe in God or believe again. And so, um, you know, so much is happening. And what I, I do want to know and talk about that is that we all struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you're a toddler in the Lord and you're just starting. I mean, we've talked about it before. You know, a toddler falls on their diaper right. and um, no parent ever goes, okay, I told you we're going to fall. Don't you get up again, That's right? It. That doesn't happen. Right. We're like, come on, baby. Yeah. Right. You can get up. You can make it. Yeah. You know, you can take a walk. And so... Right. Um, that's what we're doing in the Lord. So don't be discouraged that um, you're falling or that you're struggling it's or that hard. you have hard times. Yeah. It's normal. Absolutely. Right. You know, Come on. there was this guy in our church um, way back. And, you know, we always had a church that were full of addicts and things like that. And he was so upset with himself because he kept falling and, you know, the, the doubts and the things that he fought. And, you know, he's like, I'm just not worth it. And I'm just not like any, everybody else. And I can't do this. And I was like, dude, like when a teenager has pimples on their face, right? And they're like, man, I can't, I got zits on my face. You're like, it's normal, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Your teenagers get Every zits, teenager. yeah. you know? And um, so babies fall yeah. Yeah. and teenagers get zits. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that happens and it happens to everybody. So you are not unique in that. Um, just keep, keep getting up. Yes. Come on. Keep getting to up, the other keep getting side. up. That's right. And you are absolutely going to make it. So, um, my goodness, we have so much to say. And I'm going to, um, I do want to read this scripture. Um, Elijah was afraid. We, we've been through this on the audio podcast in First Kings chapter 19 and verse three. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. And he sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. So here he was in the wilderness, like traveling deeper and deeper into that wilderness all day. And that's how prison has been, you know, a wilderness and just traveling and traveling into this wilderness all day. And he sat down under a solitary broom tree and he prayed that he might die. And I think there's probably almost no one locked up that at some point, hadn't felt like dying, you know, considered taking their own lives. He said, take my life, God, for I'm no better than my ancestors who already died. And then he laid down and he slept under that room tree. And as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and said, get up, come on, get up and eat. And that's what I'm telling you right now right. today. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. Get up and eat, eat the word of God. That comes in forms of music, that comes in forms of reading his word, that comes in form of the chapel, that comes in forms of talking to your friend, it comes yeah. in forms of Bible study, it comes in forms of watching Real Vida, it comes in forms of watching Elevation, it comes in forms of watching The Chosen. It's, it, it's yes. all these different ways. And God says, get up and eat. Yeah, yes. right. more. Because if you don't get up and eat, you're not going to be able to, to continue this journey in this wilderness. Get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some baked bread on hot stones and a jar of water. Come on, that's yeah. the spirit of God. So he ate and he drank and he lay down again. And then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for yeah. you. That's true. Like if we don't fill up, with the word of God. Like, I mean, we, we had the church, right? And now we have Bible study at the house. And of course we have the podcast and stuff as well. And and when we get out of here, we're like buzzing on fire, you know? Um, yeah. be, why? Because we just get a, yeah. get, got up to eat so we could continue the journey or it'll be too much. Yes. Right. So he got up and ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. And there he came to a cave where he spent the night. And, Eli and the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Right? Yeah. What are you doing here in this kind of state? What are you doing in fear? What are you doing in hurt? What are you doing in pain? You got a job to do, right? Yeah. There are people around you. Like we said, don't wait till you get out to go back in. Everybody's like, I can't wait to get out so I can come back in. Right. 
Well, guess what? You're already in. <laughs> That's right. Come on. You don't have to get approval. You don't have to go through the certification. Right, right. You don't yeah. have to go get through the ride. warden to get yeah. special yeah. volunteer status. You yeah. get to, you, you volunteer right there, yeah. right now. Come yeah. on. So let's get to it because there's a lot of hurting people. Yes. And all together, us as a body, as one, we get to do this, you know? Amen. So, so awesome. anyway, Shrek is with us, Casey Posada. And so, um, he just got out a few days ago, just a few days ago. It's crazy. Yes, right? April and, 25th. Uh, and yeah. he's um staying at Calvary Commission. Yes. Right now and and all but you know uh he wrote to us and I do want to talk about that a minute. Cuz you know he started writing at the beginning of kind of our radio program and um back when we only had one radio station I think. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah. Texas 99. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. So yeah. he started writing then and and then I could get back to people more because it was just the run, one radio station and we only knew a few thousand um you <laughs> yeah, know. Right. Um so I could get back to people easier at that time. And um, and he kept writing, you know, because there was a lot of times. I mean, I couldn't, I can't, I can't get back to people anymore. But he didn't give up, and he kept on writing. And um, I really appreciate that because those are the people that I can get to know better, you know. Right. And um, and he was advertising Real Vida all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was so cool and doing all he could for God. And he wasn't a field minister. Right. He was just a real Christian. Right. So um, that's what we need is some real Christians. And um, JT over there in Beto, I think, told you, told you yeah, about us, yeah. right? Shout out, JT. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, and so so here he is. So, Casey, we didn't get to, you know, um, anything today because you were over there helping Chris work over right. there on construction and stuff like that. Um, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about kind of your childhood. How did you grow up? Did you know God and stuff growing up? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in West Texas. I always knew who God was, but as I got older, I mean, I wanted to serve two masters, okay. like like anybody that's in the penitentiary. And um, I just got through doing eight years and two months. It's not a lot compared to some people. Yeah, you know, I left a lot of friends at Beetle that that are lifers, and they're never going to come home. Yeah, right. you know, and um. And they rubbed off on me in a good way. You know, mm -hmm. I met JT. He turned me on to the radio program. And and I remember specifically, it was June of 21. We were on lockdown because somebody had been murdered. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, I was in the word, but I heard a guy one time say, you never really know who God is till he's all you have. And, yeah. and I, yeah. I happened wow. to be in the cell by myself. And, and you know, wow. the Lord was speaking to me and, you yes. know, and JT came to me, and he's like, "You should listen to this program. Y'all, wow. y'all, y'all were still coming on at coming on at one in the evening, and um, and I was upset because it was Juneteenth, and we weren't going to get to go to the good meal, and <laughs> and I was in the cell by myself. <laughs> but uh, you came on, and it was my first time listening, and you were tugging at the heart. Wow! And then I listened to it the second and Man. third week, and it was the same thing. I was crying, and <laughs> and I wrote to you, and you wrote back. You sent me some pamphlets, and and then um started coming on at ten in the evening and I was I was on the north side at Beetle. That's where I cut teeth mm. at. Mm. You know, a lot of people laugh about it because they're like, you know, uh, Beetle's not that bad. Oh. But I was on the north side <laughs> yeah. on M Wing, so you know, I shout out to all the brothers at Beetle. Yeah. You know, I haven't forgot about y'all. I just I was went through there two weeks ago in transit mm. coming from Beaumont and and I ran into um some people that I knew and and they're never gonna come home, but you know, I want to let them know, you know, there is a way. It's got to be his way because our ways will guide us in there, obviously. Right. right. You know, you can't serve two masters. Right. Yeah. So would you say that it was, was it at that time that you kind of completely started serving God fully, holy or? I was already in my walk. And um, when I got to Beto, of course, I got sent there because I signed up for a degree in, you know, one of the worst penitentiaries in the state of Texas, you know, and and I had I had to make up my mind. It was going to be all the way or, or no way at all. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I remember standing in the courtroom and and the assistant district attorney. You know, she she was going to sentence a guy and he had turned her down on a plea bargain. And she's like, oh, I hope he finds God. And I told her, I said, you know, that's, it's not a laughing matter right. because I know God. And and some of the, for, to me, some of the most educated men. You know, whether it be in the Bible or or you know in business, or whatever, or in the penitentiaries. Yes, and yeah, and, and sure. I've met them. I've yes. met them. I've men, men that can carry out exhortations that yeah. are that sound better than some of these yes. people that are oh, on TV. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so I made a decision. You know, I, I wasn't faking the funk. Come on. Yeah. You know, if you're going to fake the funk, don't come around. You know, you're going to get your hat knocked off. And I would always tell the guys that would that would be in 
you know, Bible study or whatnot, or trying to make every church service, you know, they were going to the juntas. And I would tell them, you know, the real challenge is on that side of the fence. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. and it's something that I saw, you know, just Tuesday when I got out, you know, uh, whether it was the price of stuff, how, how much things cost, you know, and, and temptation come. And I was at the Dallas bus stop and, and I was helping a lady with her bags. You know, she was disabled and she's like, why are you doing this? And I told her, I said, you know, you know, I'm a servant of the Lord. To me, the definition of servant is, you know, putting yourself last. Right. Yeah. The son of man came to serve, not to be served. Yeah. And I was helping her and she's, you know, she told me, she said, you know, them women are looking at you over there. You know, they know you just got out of the pen. I said, they don't have nothing for me, you know, because Amen. for them to know where I'm going, they have to know where I've come from. Right. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and that. You know, being at Beto, it, it opened my eyes. You know, a lot of people, you know, speak ill of these uh these maximum security units. But like I said, that's where I cut teeth. And I right. I yeah. chose to educate myself, whether it was in that schoolhouse or listening to the brothers in the right. short time that I was on the faith dorm. Yeah. So as much as there is bad, there is good and there is Come God on, as right. well. There is right. good. Right. And, that's right. And I, me personally, I... I don't, I don't, I don't look at the bad no more. You know, it, it, it takes up too much energy. Yeah. You know, I can use that towards something else. And, and I had to listen to the guys like, like Big G and Ricky Barnett and Carlton Lacey. I had a good yeah. Sally, right. you know, Jay Alcala and, you know, a lot of people, if I don't mention your name, don't, don't get offended, yeah. you know, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I've, I've got Amen. love for the guys wherever I've been at. You yeah. know, and, and I told him, I said, I'm going to, you know, I'd always, you know, preach about Real Vida Ministries. And they'd be yeah. like, oh, man, that's not all. How do you know her? You know, and I was like, <laughs> man, she's good, you know, but that's for another day, that story. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, it, it, it was it was till I got out, you know, just yeah. had the tablet recently. And can I read them the scripture? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I got a scripture. It's uh, Psalms chapter 40 in verses one through three. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my foot on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many Amen. will see and fear yes. and put their trust in the Lord. And that's that's what I did. I cried yes. out to yeah. him. Yes. And, yeah. he, and he heard me. And then another mm. scripture that I like is in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And this is my buddy Paul. Because I was just like him too, yes. you know. I yes. was, I was, yeah. I was doing the enemy's work. Come on. Yeah. So it says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already right. been made perfect, but right. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Yes. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do: forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And like you asked, you know, I'll get. I'm going to bring it to a close, you know, because I like to talk. <laughs> you know, I had to make up my mind. Come on. And, yeah. um, Come on. And y'all showed me love. Yeah. You know, like I told you when I, when, I, when I called you and we spoke the first time, I said, you know, um, you were that, y'all were them, what it speaks about in the book of Matthew. You came to see me in prison. Come on. You know, because there was times, you know, I have a wonderful family back home. I've got my mom and dad, two older brothers and a younger sister, and they're there for me. Yeah. But I didn't want to go back to that stuff. Man, wow. So I made a decision to go to Calvary Commission, and and I still stayed in touch with y'all. Yes. And that's why I'm here. Wow. Yeah. You know, because I, I kept it real the whole time, and, and you know, that's there's crazy. no fake right here. Man. Yeah. You know, whether it's Thank like, you, it's just like I tell people, you know, you can call me Casey if you want. You know, that's my God-given name, you know, or... You want to speak to Shrek or you want to speak to OG Shrek? Because, <laughs> you know, I, I can give it to you, Ron. No, but, you know, like 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 you said, you know, we didn't we didn't have a lot of time to. Uh -huh, to right, this is this right, isn't choreographed. Right, yeah. Right. You know, so, crazy. you know, I'd be tell, I would tell the guys before I was leaving, I said, y'all going to see me on the podcast. Yeah. Y'all going to be like, man, he wasn't lying. <laughs> you know, you know, so and, yes. and, and, and that's what I want them to know out there. You know, you watching that Pando or you're on that Securus because I was on there and. There's a lot of ministers out there, and they're good, you know. But the way I look at it is a lot of that New Testament was written in prison yeah. by the Apostle Come on. Paul. Come on. Yeah. And um, it wasn't, I, this is what I told the DA in my hometown. It wasn't written in some high rise in New York on, on. on Fifth Avenue right. or Rodale yes. Drive. Yes. It yeah. was written in prison. Yeah. And, um, and uh, my love is for the prisoners. You know, yes. um, I want, I'm going to go into the ID units one day when I, yes, when I can are. get approved. Yes, you and, you know, and, and my ambition is to, you know, to work with at-risk youth. 
You know, yes. I got a lot of, I stayed in it. I stayed busy in that schoolhouse and people would ask why, 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 well, why not? Right. You know, and I was telling Chris earlier, I said, you know, there was a time where I was the only one that went to church and I, and then I ended up going with G, with the G3s and a guy questioned me and he's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, the officer let me come, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and I seen all the bad things, you know, and how the gangs were and, you know, I, I made a decision. Yeah. I made a decision and it's like, it speaks about in the scripture, you know, making a vow to the Lord. Yeah. You know, it's better not to make one than to make right. one and not repay. Uh, it's in Ecclesiastes. Yes. You know, so I'm at Calvary Commission. And um, right now I'm dedicated to do a nine-month discipleship and biblical studies. That's great. And hopefully, you know, if it's Man. the Lord's will, I'll go do some mission work in Mexico. But, um, I mean, my love is, I mean, God's the one that pulled me out. Amen. You know, I'm, Come on. you know, to the person that's out there, you know, if you're on life row or, or you're segged up, you know, I've been segged up and I had to reach out to the Lord, you know, but you know what? I don't just reach out to him when things are bad, when things are going Come good. On. Yeah. Right. I still talk to him. Right. And Come you know, you, you want them blessings, you know, you know, are you, I mean, it takes more than just just saying a prayer over breakfast or lunch. You got to be in communion with him. Yeah, it's like being in a relationship with a woman. You know, um, you don't just get married and say I do and hope hope for the best. You got to make it work every day. Yeah. Right. So you can sit to if you're out there and you're you're thugging. You know, thug to me stands for you know true and honorable under God. You know, pick up. You want to be boss? Pick up your cross. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You know, um, you know, I used to be that that bad guy. But that's not who I want to identify as anymore. Amen. You know, people ask me like, "Well, what does your family think?" Well, you know, it doesn't really matter what they think because yeah. I'm, you know, you hear a lot of people they say, "Well, I did this for my kids and I did this for my wife." No, you have do to do for something you. for yourself. You have right. to fix yourself before come you can on. fix anybody else. You know, yes, and, come on. And I and I got two older brothers, and one of my brothers did time, you know, and he's in the word too, and you know, he told me he said, you know, I got to speak to him before I left got shipped off from Beaumont. He's like, you know, don't come back. Go, you know, go get yourself better. Amen. Yeah. You know, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, my brother used to be that bad guy too. He did a little bit of time and and I, I'm listening to him and I'm like, man, this is really my brother telling me this. And and I'm talking to one of my cousins the other day and he's like, what, what did you do with my cousin Shrek? <laughs> you sound so different. You know, Amen. But, you know, but, but, yeah. but that was God. He, you know, he cleaned me up. Yeah. 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 You know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's like Ricky Barnett told me, you're not a wolf no more. You you're a sheep. Amen. You know, Amen. I was that I was that one that, that straight off. Right. Yeah, come on. You know, because uh and all the time that I did, I haven't seen my family in four years. Yeah. And then I decided to go to this this I program. Know. That's crazy. Amen. And, and I'm with these brothers, you know, they're at Calvary. The founders are great, you know, Joe and Charlotte Foss and and the guys are speaking they're speaking life after being where I've been and then and I'm here with y'all. Amen. You know, God's got, I mean, there's so yeah. much in but, store wow. for you and we're so excited about it. Um, this is just the beginning, but it's crazy that he's Amazing. been out only a few days and he yeah. went from, from prison to podcast on Pandora. <laughs> yeah. What? What? what, what? One, Amen. 1.2 so cool. million. So, that's crazy. <laughs> so I do want to read this one last letter and then Jeremy's going to share with uh, the word with us. Um, um, man, this letter, man, 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 wow, 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 wow. So there's this guy, right? And um, a, a segger. And uh, he had wrote me a couple years ago, actually, and um, and so this letter is about about that time also. So it says, "Hello, Eve. Just here, thanking you for getting on Pando. Um, do you remember me, right?" Um, I wrote you a letter asking you how you could love us in Seg, and you don't even know us. I also told you of us. All of a sudden, you guys love us. Where you? Where were you guys all the godly people back decades ago? Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was like, where were the Christians when I needed them? And listen to me, you know, it's the truth. That's right. the truth. Christians ought to be going out of those four walls doing the work of God. Yes. And um, and so, yes, I, I understood completely what he was saying. And he said, and you responded to me in writing, which you don't like doing writing. Mm -hmm. He knows that I don't I don't write. My hand don't work very well. And and I'm not a good write letter writer, um, but I did write to him. I thought I can't I can't not right. I can't respond, not respond. So I wrote to him and I told him a little bit about my own story and my own personal life. In 
family and things. Um, and so he was really surprised then that I had wrote him back. And he said, and back then, I think I was really worried about you for this reason. You touched my heart. Mm. And I said, if she touches my heart, she's dangerous. Mm. She's dangerous to my family, which he meant the gang family. Wow. She will touch them and I'll lose carnales. Yeah, buddy. I'm taking him away yeah, from you. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Jesus is going to do it, right? Jesus is going to do it and he's doing it. He said, she will touch them and I'll lose carnales. Well, mm. now I don't care if my carnales go to God. Come on. Thank you. I'm having a very hard time changing my life. Um, eventually, it's going to happen. I hope soon. Please pray for me. You guys really do love us in SEG, right? God is Love is going to change everything. I see that now. God Amen. bless you guys. Wow. And man, it's one of my favorite letters of all time. Beautiful. I just bawled my eyes out. Um, love does change everything. Yeah. Love covers a multitude of sins. Right. Like the love of God is what got me. That's when I gave my life and I had never felt love in my life. And the room filled with the presence of God. And what, what struck me most was the love that I felt. And I thought, I don't want to lose this. Yeah. Like, I need to know you. I need to keep this. Like, how do I keep this? Like, I was like, you know, addicted immediately. Yeah. I'm addicted to this love. I've got to, I got to have this. Um, and so I, I started reading the Bible. I said to God, God, if you're real and if you will want me, like me, and please, here's my life. I can't do this by myself. And so I started reading the Bible, Genesis to Revelations. It took me um, six weeks. I read six weeks, Genesis to Revelation. It took about eight hours a day. And I was so shocked at what was in there and what wasn't in there. But I got to know who he was. And so um, anyways, um, that's what we need to do, right? Come is on. know our Father, your well, hey guys, we're going to be back right after this song, and then we're going to talk about the outsiders. Well, let's talk about outsiders. Um, it's amazing those letters that you've read today. Two of them actually really were the same thing. Both of them, I think, from women. Um, and I really love the way that the one lady said it. I'm a black sheep, but I'm okay in my skin Come now. On. Come on. I'm going to rock this black that's sheep right. coat <laughs> mm -hmm. of mine. And uh, really, that's really what it's all about is understanding who God created us to be and just allowing him to use us just as he made us and he right. formed us. And so uh, the title of the message is Outsiders. Um, and God gave this to us probably in 2016 is when I first started preaching this in units here in Texas. I'm going to start, uh, start with this scripture first in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And he chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. So, you know, one of the things that we started telling people when we closed down our church building and focused on the prisons is that we're really just recruiters for the army of God. And I'll put up this picture in a second here. It's an old recruiting poster from Uncle Sam where he's pointing. He says, we want you uh, for the U.S. Army. And that's what God is telling us to do. And that's why we are uh, first got on radio and then we got on Securus and now we're on Pando is because we're out, we're recruiting people yeah. who are ready to serve in the Army. Uh, and yet today we got 51 letters. <laughs> Yesterday we got 49, 46 the day before that. I mean, it's going crazy. People are signing up for the Army. Amen. The two biggest recruiting days ever was December 8th, 1941, after Japan attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor. And the second biggest recruiting day was September 12th, 2001, because people found a cause that they believed in and they wanted to sign up to fight. Come on. And I'm telling you, a war, if, if you don't already realize it, a war is coming. Yeah. Yep. Like, uh, the time is short. We're in the last days and the enemy knows his time is short. Right. So in case you haven't noticed, he is starting to fight on every front. He's trying to take your children. He's trying to take your families. He's trying to take the culture and he's already right. almost completely taken it. He's taken government. He's taken the economy and he, he wants every single one of us, right? Right. Yeah. And so 
we're looking for a few good men and women. Come for on, the and, army and there's God. a cause to fight for. Yes. And, right. I, and, you know, Come on. I, they are finding that. Yeah. People right. are signing up because they know this is a cause to fight for. The only one. And, and yeah. what had happened on 9 11, you know, when people, again, wanted to go well, enlist me, I'll go, I'll go fight. Yeah. Was it was so big and there was such devastation and they saw men and women um, die and children. Yeah. And, and that, well, right now, is it not the same thing, yeah. right? That, you know, prisoners, even the prisoners, they're yeah, like, down I, don't the want run my, from you. Yeah. I don't want my son coming in into prison. I yeah. don't want my daughter going down the wrong road. There's something to fight for. Come so on. enlisting in the army of God. Absolutely. So one of the amazing things about it is, um, you know, it, the woman talking about rocking the black sheep coat. Um, I rock it, that. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I think sometimes the church has done a really bad job of portraying kind of what God's call mm. is. Because for so many years, we grew up thinking that there's a perfect Christian who has a perfect life and, you know, the white picket fence and they never and been to jail. And then they're worthy. Yeah, right. yeah. And then right. they deserve it. Um, and that somehow that if we've had a divorce or if we've gone to jail or we're ever on drugs or right. ever uh, went through everything, ever were suicidal, uh, ever took medication, that all of a sudden now you're disqualified right. and you're unworthy. But I want to tell you about when God sent his son from heaven to walk the earth so he could bring the plan of salvation for men, so he could die on the cross for our sins. Uh, God created the universe, right? right? He can do anything. He did not make Jesus be born to a family in Jerusalem, to a rich family, to uh, maybe the high priest Mm -hmm. family. He didn't have Jesus be born in Rome because at the time, Rome ruled the whole world. He had Jesus born to out of wedlock to a teenage mother, to a the son or the the, the earthly son of a carpenter. Right. And they lived in the worst neighborhood in all of Israel. In the they, a place called Galilee. Galilee was the ghetto of Israel. It was a section eight housing of Israel. It was a bad trailer park. Uh it was the barrio. That's where Jesus grew up. Yeah. And God does everything for a reason. Yeah. He's so intentional with everything that he does. So why Galilee? As I started studying that out, why would Jesus grow up in the worst neighborhood in all right. of Israel to bring the plan of salvation to men? Okay, so uh, I got to share with you this scripture real quick. In John chapter one, verse 45, Jesus has just started his ministry and he's starting to talk to the disciples. And so Philip hears Jesus and he goes and finds his friend Nathaniel and says, we found the Messiah. You've got to come. You've got to listen to him. And Nathaniel said, can anything good come from Nazareth? Come on. Nazareth was a town in Galilee. Well, guess what? Nathaniel was from Galilee too. He knows. It's <laughs> self-hatred, right? I mean, you, well, you ever been from that part of town where you think nothing good can come right. from that part of town? And what Nathaniel was saying when he said, can anything good come from Nazareth? What he was really saying is, can I be good? Can anything good come from me? I'm just a Galilean. So the things I found about Galilee are amazing. First of all, it's the most multicultural, mixed up place in all of Israel. Everywhere else in Israel, the races did not mix. Guess what? In Galilee, they did. They had a uh, multiracial region. It was all biologically and culturally mixed. The other Jews looked down on the Galileans, like the ones that I'm gonna put up this picture. This guy right here that you're gonna see, he called Galileans peasants and the common people. When you said, talked about a Galilean, it was carrying this stigma, right, of uh, irreligious, unsophisticated, uneducated, unworthy kind of people. Galilee was known as the, the place where the rejected were. I'm gonna put up this other picture here. This is, uh, this is my buddy, Pedro. And if we, if, if we could see what the Galileans looked like in today's dress, it would look something like this. So, That's where the despised live. That's where the outcasts live. That's where the foreigners live. That's where the manual laborers live. And in Galilee, you didn't make your living by going and working in an office in the air conditioning. You went out and you were working out in the fields. You were in the oil field. You were a plumber. You were a carpenter, right? You were working with your hands, blue collar labor. It's kind of crazy too, because if somebody had uh, debts that they owed, they would go and hide out in Galilee. And this is historically 
true. It's been proven, uh, comes from the works of Josephus. So if you were behind on your truck payment, you would drive your truck to Galilee because you knew that in Galilee, the repo dude was not going to roll up in Galilee and try (laughs) to repossess your truck, right? If you had warrants out, guess where you'd go? You go to Galilee because the police are not going to roll up in Galilee to try and arrest you on those warrants for the traffic tickets or whatever because they're scared of Galilee, right? right? Galilee was a rough place. So this is very interesting. So even though they were looked down on, at the time, Israel was completely dominated by Rome. Rome was ruling at the time. So from time to time, the Israelites would, the, the Jews would rise up and try and throw off the Romans. Every time a revolt started, it started in Galilee. In fact, when Jesus was about eight or nine years old, there was a, a, a revolt led by a guy named Judas the Galilean. Um, and he rose up uh, an army and they tried to fight the Romans and the Romans came in and stomped them out, squashed it out. Now, Jesus and his family were very religious. They went to Passover in Jerusalem every year. So we know that he, he would have seen this. To punish the Galileans and set a public example, they crucified 3,000 Galileans and put them on crosses all along the road. So when people walked down that road, they would see this is what happens when you challenge Rome. But the crazy thing about it is, even though the Galileans were poor, even though they had no nothing really to lose, they're the ones who would fight, up, rise up and fight the Romans. They were known to be stubborn. I'll put up this picture right here. Here's another. This is this is uh, another Galilean. They were known to be patriotic, courageous, and they refused to surrender. And what they figured out was the Jews in Jerusalem had business dealings and ties with the Romans. So they had something to lose. They didn't want to fight the Romans. Mm. The Galileans had absolutely nothing to lose. So they were willing to fight even if they lost their life because they were, they were guys that weren't going to back down from a fight. I don't know, Shrek, if you know anybody like that. <laughs> They're not willing to back down <laughs> from a fight. <laughs> I got a feeling that... Shrek might be a Galilean, <laughs> but, but why would God? Why would God do that? Why would God put Jesus to walk on this earth and grow up in the bad neighborhood? And I want to show you why. It's this picture right here, because Jesus knew that his followers were going to have to be willing to go right when everyone else was going left. And right. and Shrek talked about this when he was talking about what God is doing in his life right now. He's making decisions. And he's been out six days or whatever it is so far. And every day you've got to make a decision. Like your buddy Paul said, I die daily, right? Right. Uh, Jesus said, you got to take up your cross and follow me. And so every day you got to go right, even if everybody else is going left. Yeah. So, you know, that tough character is created. And, um, you know, what, what, what I have found, what we have found a lot of times, you know, we'll talk to somebody and like, you know, right away, uh, my husband was saying, man, Shrek reminds me of you. Like he, it, when he came home after he'd spent breakfast with them, he's like, he's like you in so yeah. many ways. There, what I found is there's a recipe. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a recipe. So, so like all these people that we found that kind of got line up with that personality, you had to be tough. You had to make it on your own. You had to be determined. You had to stand. You had to, you know, and it's created something. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, yeah, absolutely. So, so Jesus himself was going to go through by being born in Galilee and being born in the barrio, right? And and having to go through these things, it was being created in him. And yeah. he and, and it was being created in his people. Come on. Mm. And so so yeah, so so all of you are from the barrio in there. All of Come you on. are from Galilee, Galileans. I remember the first time my husband ever preached this message, I was like, why are you talking about me? What's he doing, you know? I'm talking about tough, talking about stubborn, talking about this yeah. and that. I was like, I was like, he didn't tell me about this, right? Like it just, yeah. He's describing me right now, you know? But there's a recipe for yeah. that. And had I not been bound, hit by the hard knocks of the, you know, this world and situations yeah. since childhood, I wouldn't be who I am. Right. And I thank God more for those hurts and those yes. pains that I even do for the good mm. times. Yes. And if it weren't for those things, I wouldn't be doing right. prison ministry. Come on, I wouldn't get Shrek, right? I, mm. I wouldn't understand um, what was going on. So I'm so grateful Yes. For all of that, those things, the recipe that made yeah. Eve into who I could be, who I should be, so I could minister to the people yeah. that he's called me to. So I want to show you this picture now too. 
because this is one of my favorite pictures. For those of you who are listening on radio uh, or on an audio podcast, there's a little boy. He's crouched in a wrestling ring, and he's looking at a huge sumo wrestler that's just enormous. Uh, bring it. And you can tell that little boy... He's like, I think I can take it. I think him. I got this. I think I can take I got him. this. Yeah, he's ready to go, man. <laughs> right. And that is the attitude that God wanted Come on. Yeah. Jesus' disciples David to have. David and Goliath. They Let's had to be raised up in Galilee. And I wanted to talk to our sister who wrote the letter because I want her to know that God didn't choose you in spite of your black sheep Come on, coat. Right. Come on. God He's shows you because, because of, of your black come sheep on. coat. Come on, yes, right. yes, yes. You have to understand that. So like back at the time, Galilean was an insult. You might not even be a Galilean, but if somebody didn't like you and wanted to cuss you out, basically they call you a Galilean. That's how low the Galileans <laughs> were considered. And it also was equivalent to an outsider. If they said Galilean, you're like, you're outsider. I'm inside. You're outside, right? So Galilee was the neighborhood where you never left your doors unlocked, right? And uh, I've got this picture I'm putting up if you're looking at the audio podcast. It's a little frame house, but they got bars on the windows. They got a, mm. a gate all around it, a fence. There's like razor wire everywhere, <laughs> you know? I mean, there may not be much in that house, but like right. you can't have it. It's yeah. my stuff. <laughs> right. right. You're not getting into my so you're house. You're not getting my commissary. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Oh no, you ain't getting my commissary. It might be a suit, but it might. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Galilee was the neighborhood that rich people didn't drive in after dark. Right. They kept their doors unlocked at the stoplight. Galilee was completely unexpected. I want to tell you about three of the disciples. We can't talk about all of them, yeah, but I got to tell you about three. Okay. So this picture right here. Well, this is an actual picture of Peter because there weren't cameras back then. Okay, but this is Peter. I want to tell you about Peter. Peter's a manual laborer, blue-collar guy. He's got a salty mouth, right? He, he had a problem cussing. He cussed a lot at first, and he had to get refined and cleaned up. He had an anger management problem. He was really right. impulsive, and sometimes he'd say stuff without thinking it through. Uh, and, you know, he was really had a rash temperament. But Jesus said to him, upon this rock, I will build, build my, my church. church. So this one right here, this is Matthew. He was a tax collector. It was the most despised profession in all of Israel because he was literally taking money from his brothers and sisters and giving it to the Romans. He was considered the lowest of the low and Jesus called him on purpose. So I don't know if you may be considered the lowest of the low by anyone, but I want you to know that Jesus on purpose picked the lowest of the low Always. to be one Always. of his disciples. And this last one here blew my mind when I started studying it out. This is Simon Zelotes. We don't know much about Simon, but we know he was a member of the Zealot Party. To be a member of the Zealot Party, you had to actively participate in the murder of a Roman officer. You had to either do it yourself or be part of the conspiracy. That was the, the way that you got in. So we, it, it doesn't say that in any chapter and verse, but we know historically that's how you got in the party and he was a zealot. So Jesus called a murderer to be in his crew. Come on. There's absolutely nothing that you've done, right. know where you've gone, know where you come from that right. disqualifies you from being one of Jesus's people. He called outsiders on purpose. So there's one out of all 12 disciple. There was only one disciple out of all 12 of the disciples that was not from Galilee. Shrek, do you have any clue who it was? Think. Everybody's from the barrio except for one of them. Todos del barrio. Everybody si no, from the ghetto, but one. <laughs> you put me on blast. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Watch out. You, about, when you listen about, to this, who it was. How about Judas? Judas. Yeah. Judas was, he was the, the only, only churchy one. one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was the only churchy one. The rest were from the ghetto. The rest were from Beto. Come on. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and, and this guy was nah. from the church. Come on. <laughs> right. The only one. So Galilee was nowhere. The disciples were no one. And Jesus called them. Come on. Right. I'm going to close yes. with this uh, this verse right here. Mark 2, 13. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. While Levi was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And when the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they asked his disciples, 
disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, come on. but the ones with black sheep coats. Amen. Come on. Come on. That's me. All yeah. right, let's do this. Yeah, Amen. All right. So yeah, we're at the end of our program. It went by so fast, but we're going to pray with you. Listen, we're going to pray with you and don't don't forget that we're praying if this goes out before it on May 3rd and we're fasting. Amen. And um, somebody wrote and said, but what about, you don't want to pray for the nation. That's the May 4th. That's National right. Prayer Day. But on May 3rd, we have made it National Prisoner Prayer Day. Right. Yeah. And we're going to pray for COs and we're going to pray for wardens right. and we're going to pray for prisoners and um, and we're going to get to it and, and, and make sure our life is lining up pray for revival in those prisons. Pray right. that people be activated. Pray they be healed. And when you see someone that is not being talked to, you see someone that is lonely, you see someone that is hurting, you minister right now. Right. Come on. Yeah, come There's on. enough Christians to to change these prisons around in every single unit. Right. If there was only one, there's enough. Yeah. But there's way more than that in every single unit. It's time to turn this thing around, okay? Right. So we're going to pray out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for what you have begun. You are going to perfect, Father, that your word is not going to return void where it was sent, Father, that you're you're bringing the water of your spirit, Lord God. You're watering those desert valleys, Lord. Those that have been traveling into the desert, they're they're laying down and and almost dead, but they're going to get up and eat now. And Father the God, they're going to they're going to eat your word and they're going to get strong, Father, and they're going to share with others and your will is going to be done and we're going to begin to hear more and more and more about how you're turning every single situation around, how you're turning the prisons around. Father, that it's going to be hard to find gang members. It'll be hard to find somebody unsaved, hard to find somebody not watching Pando, hard to find somebody not watching Real Vida, hard to find somebody not worshiping God. Father, that your will is going to be done. I set yes. them free by the power of your name, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.